The Prevention of Terrorism Act came into the books of law in Sri Lanka in 1979 as a temporary measure during the conflict with the LTT. However, later in 1982, it was made permanent by the Sri Lankan government. Since its usage following the enactment, it was heavily criticized as a draconian piece of legislation by factions, both local and international. During the past few years, the Sri Lankan government was accused of using the PTA to repress protesters, human rights activists and civil society groups. The United Nations human rights experts call for an immediate moratorium on the use of PTA and urge the government to substantively review and revise the legislation to comply with international human rights law. Due to the massive public pressure, the government took measures to prepare a draft bill to repeal the Prevention of Terrorism Act and it was approved by the Cabinet in October last year. The bill was published in the Government Gazette on the 23rd of March this year. Expressing his views, Minister of Justice Dr. Vijaydas Rajapaksa says the bill was prepared by adhering to international laws and referring to anti-terrorism legislations of other countries. Under the PTA, the powers to detain the people were exclusively vested in the executive, namely the president. But under the new act, the issuing of detention orders by the hierarchy of the police is only with the approval of the judiciary. And therefore, all these activities are subject to the judicial proceedings and therefore nobody can now bring an argument that this is a draconian law as it was under the PTA. If one examines the loans relating to prevention of terrorism in many other jurisdictions like India, United Kingdom, German, France, the provisions in their laws are very stringent than the provisions that we have introduced under the present bill. Speaking further, the Justice Minister explained the importance of an anti-terrorism legislation to protect the rights of the people. There are some criticism. By using some of the provisions of the bill, the government is trying to suppress the rights of trade unions or to oppress uh, the activities of trade unions. But that is a misleading statement because all these provisions, where that there could be any kind of disruptions to the general public, prevention of the obstruction of the essential services to the people, all those provisions in the bill have to be understood and interpreted, reading together with the definitions that we have given for terrorism. That is section 2 and section 3 of the bill. And therefore, under the present law, under the proposed law, everything will be subject to the judicial control and court will oversee the proceedings. The main criteria in making a law of this nature is to balance on one side the national defense, the, on the other side the rights of the people. Without a law to prevent terrorism, no country can survive, no state will survive in the today's context. And we have addressed the basic norms and principles accepted in the international law and other jurisdictions and we have carefully drafted this bill. In this backdrop, the government plans to present the anti-terrorism bill to the parliament in the near future. Hatravendam Pasma Piratsene, April Masi Tungani Sati, Enisa, Tungani Sati, Nia Patrete, Atulat Kota Dinanima Karaganima, Kara.